what are some practical steps that you recommend that we can do to support those who have been displaced and, you know, maybe in our areas that we don't know about? Yeah, so a lot of uh, American cities have refugee agencies, um, like in Chicago, we have a lot of them, and I'm sure in other major cities there are. Um, so you could volunteer with the refugee agency. Lots of refugee agencies are looking for people to volunteer in after school activities to help kids kind of acclimate. Um, you know, kids, as a pediatrician and as a mom, I know that kids, one of the most important things for kids is to feel safety and security. And in order to do that, they need a routine. And so um, school provides that, after school programs provide that. Um, and just being like a safe listening space for a child, you know, sometimes they're not going to tell you all of the horrific things that they experience, but just knowing that there's an adult there in their life who is safe, who is there to listen to them, who's there to support them, can really go a long way. Other things that we can do is just um, you can adopt one refugee family. So I, I did a I did a um, a talk in Michigan with a mosque, um, and they were asking me like, oh, how how can you get a refugee family to kind of open yeah. up to you? And I said, you know, they're not going to open up to you on their first meeting, but if you mm -hmm. keep seeing the same family over and over again, you know, not you're not hopping families. You just take one family, you take them under your wing, and then you you know see them once a week, once every couple of weeks then they, you will become their safe space. And so imagine yourself going to another country where you don't speak the language, what would be important to you? So one of the things that you can do is help them navigate their junk mail. I know it sounds so frivolous, but that's something that, you know, they don't know, like, what is this? You know, what? You, you just tell them, no, you just throw that away. That's junk, you don't need that. Or yeah. like helping them getting their driver's license or figuring out how to work the transit system, preschool, daycare, English classes. There's so many things that you can help a refugee family navigate in this country where they don't know the language. So those are, you know, a few tangible things. But another thing that you can do that can be maybe more impactful is to write your Congress people, right, our con um, representatives and senators about, you know, opening up the borders for more, more refugees. I know it's a big issue with the hot topic here in the United States with all of these um, migrants or refugees coming up from Central America, South America, and Chicago too, even though we're a sanctuary city, there's been a lot of talk in the last, um, like, couple of weeks about why are our tax dollars going to support these people as opposed to like putting it back into the city and to people who need it. Um, yes, we, yes, there are undoubtedly people in the city who need the tax dollars who need to be supported, but we can also still extend, no matter how, how little we have, we can still extend a hand. And I feel like I experienced that from visiting refugees. Like they would always invite me into their little tent. They would give me tea. And these are people who have lost everything they could, they could still be hospitable. So I think in our situation, no matter how little we have, we can still be hospitable too.